Hey everybody, um, I'm Romy Hill and I'm the designer behind Designs by Romy. And um, usually I have my little introductory screen on a little bit longer, um, but a couple of people have been confused, like they didn't realize that it was a live. And so when they've gone to look later, it looks like, oh, stand by and nothing happens. So I'm kind of trying to cut down on the amount of time that I had the little introductory screen up. Um, so here I am. It's lovely to see you all here. I've been at a little bit of sixes and sevens since I got back from Vogue Knitting Live in New York. Um, and also my site is still being migrated to a different um, host. So I haven't been able to send out a newsletter because um, if I send out a newsletter, then I can't take care of people who unsubscribe. Like, so it won't say my, my newsletter. It's kind of like my site is frozen in amber. So um, sorry, I don't mean to be incommunicado. Um, I just want to make sure that um, anybody who like buys anything or unsubscribes or subscribes or anything like that gets ported over to my new home. So after that, hopefully um, things will go better. So I'm super happy um, for you all to join me today. So for those of you who are watching and don't know, um, if you subscribe to my channel and you want to talk to me, uh, you can take part in the live chat. And um, otherwise, I don't have the setting open so anyone can take part in it just because um, I can't really watch the live chat. So I wanna make sure that you know, no one's really coming over and being disruptive. So hi, Marianne. Hi, Terry. Hi, Judy. Hi, you all. It's nice to see you. Um, let's see. So many things. So anyway, I think I'm going to cover up my, um, my mannequins behind here. So how's that? Well, a little bit at least. This is um, one of my mystery shawls from years past, and it's getting to be that time again. So mystery time again is coming, even though Stitches West is not going to happen again. So um, for those of you in the West, you already know this. Stitches West is no more. And a verb for keeping warm and I um, launch mystery kits, mystery shawl kits every year at Stitches West. So we're actually still doing that. And um, we're gonna do it at the end of February. So basically the same timing that we did before um, when Stitches was around. And you can still get a kit and I'm still gonna do the mystery. And um, so we both have so much fun, um, Verb and I, we have so much fun with a mystery every year. So that is absolutely happening this year, even without Stitches West. Hi, Julie. It's so nice that you joined us. Um, today I am wearing my Virga poncho. And so this pattern is like, it's either a stole or a poncho, but I really like the poncho because I'm wearing overalls. So um, it's like really handy. I'll stand up here. So you can see what it looks like. So it's really handy um, when I wear it over my overalls because it's really easy to, um, like way easier to deal with if I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so a sweater over it is tough, but this is way better. And it's built so that you can just sort of drape it around your shoulders. So um, you can have the long part in front or in back. I like to wear it in back, so it kind of trails over my um, shoulder and I can flounce around. So, hi, Deborah. Oh, thank you so much. Um, so, Deborah, I was just talking about how, I don't know, there is a delay, so I'm not sure like what part everybody has missed and what part you haven't missed. Um, my site is still being migrated. So that was a lot of what I was talking about. 
Um, so I haven't been able to send out a newsletter, but hopefully it will soon be okay. <sighs> Crossing fingers. Anyway, so um, before I get into my new pattern, which is someone call a taxi, um, I just wanted to show you this. I just got this yesterday in the mail and it's a new book from Emma Risu. Um, and it's done with, this is, it's done with hand spun, this beautiful hand spun yarn um, from Mongolia. And Nomad Nus is the, um, is the yarn purveyor. And this is my um, design on the cover. And I am so honored. It's a really beautiful book. This is called Winter's Peak. And it's an asymmetrical shawl. Um, it's one color and it's knit in kind of like an Aran weight yarn. So it looks like it's two colors, but in reality, it's actually, um, it's one color. And what you're seeing there is just, I don't know if you can, how well you can see that. It's just the um, twisted rib stitch is making it like it, it really pops off the page. And there are other fantastic um, patterns in here too from other designers that I've been kind of drooling over. So um, so I think it's up for pre-order right now. And I have to find my favorite. I really love the sweater in here. I, it's not my design, but I really like it. Called Rome by Irene Lynn. And it's really pretty. I really like it a lot. So some really cool, um, some really cool designs on there. And you can actually see all of the designs are up on Ravelry right now. So um, you can see all of the rest of them. So hi, Sue. Hi, Terry. Yay. So I actually, um, I posted an outfit today before... <laughs> before I went live because it was, you guys seem to like it. So, um, so you can see my, um, bright orange Crocs with my outfit today for going live. I think it adds a little something extra to the outfit. So, okay. So I have a new pattern out and here they are. This is called Someone Call a Taxi, and um, they are fingerless mitts. They're very cozy, especially the Muppet pelt around and on the um, on the edging here makes them super cozy. So when you wear them with a coat, this kind of fills up that space between your hand and your coat and keeps the wind out. So let me uh, transition these over. So that's what they look like up close. This is a loop stitch on the bottom here. And um, these, are, these are modeled after kind of more vintage looking mitts that I've seen that have a fur lining. So I used Muppet Pelt instead. Do it yourself Muppet Pelt. And Hound's tooth. I love hound's tooth. So this is kind of a simplified hound's tooth. Like if you look at it, um, hound's tooth is is mostly like more involved than this. So oh, and let me see. So Queen Tut Mary, the name of the book. What is really the name of the book? It's called Nomad Knits. So Nomad Knits, and it's um, Amarisu. They are, uh, they have a little magazine. They're a Japanese knitting store. They have um, a magazine. Actually, I bet you would be able to see um, the up close just a little bit better. So let me, let me see if I can find up close. So here are some of the pictures. The photography is really beautiful. So it's like a pleasure to look at it as well as to knit these um, patterns. 
And Emma Risu always does really, really beautiful, beautiful work. So let me see. Okay, Sue, I am so happy that you like the oddments. Okay, so one of the cool things about these is that the top folds over for these mitts. So this is an extra long um, ribbing up at the top here. And this part down here is half twisted ribbing. I have my, my um, mitt is besmirched. And then up here, that is fully twisted so that you can fold the top over and you get a, a still a really nice um, looking twisted rib on top. So this has a tubular, a stone tubular bind off at top and also around the thumb. So here's what the thumb looks like. Um, it has increases in the color work throughout here. And then the thumb also has a sewn tubular bind off here. Um, and this, like the cuff part, this just rolls under. So this first part here, um, this is just a little bit of reverse stockinette at the bottom, just to curl under and stay out of the way of all the loops. So there are actually five loop rows and there is a round of purling in between each one. And um, I do want to say that even if your loops aren't exactly the same size, it still ends up with this cool kind of effect here, like loopy sort of um, Muppet Pelty looking loops here. So don't feel bad if your loops are a little wonky because it adds to like the overall texture of it. So I am, I am watching the comments, um, but there is a delay, like I was saying. So you'll probably see me looking over there to make sure that there aren't any questions that I need to answer. I think everything's good. Yay. Um, so Sue, you're, you asked, we start with the loops or are they done after? So um, you actually do them as you're knitting. So you don't have to pick anything up afterwards. And I'm going to show you how to do them. So there's also a teeny tiny tutorial on the loop stitch. And um, there's also, there's one linked in the pattern description as well as in the pattern. And then there's also the um, braid here, this is a lateral. Um, they're called like a lateral or Estonian or Vickle braid. And there, it's just a little braid around the top part of the loops here. So you can see each one of these kind of looks like it's tied in a knot. And it looks like it would be really difficult, but it's not. So don't worry, it'll be good. It's all good. Okay, so I have a bunch of little pieces of stuff to show you. And I bet I didn't bring my, um, I didn't bring my loops over. So this is so embarrassing, but I'm gonna walk over here and I'm just gonna go grab my loops. I had like a whole bunch of little pieces of um, swatches and stuff for you. So here we go. Okay. So let's get down to the loops. Yes, Sue, I am like totally, I'm geeky. Um, Janice, are you talking about the mitts or about the shawl in the Nomad Knits book? Because um, the shawl in the Nomad Knits book is it's um, like an Aran weight. And these mitts are DK weight. So yeah, sort of, sort of worsted, sort of not. Okay, so loops. Let's do the loops. Alrighty. Okay. So I'm going to do these first continental style. And then I'm going to show you English style. 
So you can see down here, um, each one of these looks like a little tiny knot. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is knit a stitch, and then I'm not going to drop this origin stitch off of the needles. Instead, I'm going to bring my yarn forward in between the two needles. So I wanna keep it sort of tensioned so it's not too terribly loose and floppy. And then I'm going to wrap the yarn around my right finger and then bring it back between those two needles again. And now I'm going to knit a second stitch into that same origin stitch. So now I can pull it off the needle and now I have two stitches out of that same stitch plus this loop. So at this point, I can kind of adjust the size of the loop. And after I lock it in, I can't really adjust it. But right now I can kind of like pull it a little bit and adjust it. So I'm gonna hold the loop down and then I'm going to take that first stitch that I did in that one origin stitch and then slip it over the top of the second stitch. And that is what loop, that's what locks in the loop. So now it's really stable. And so for the mitts, um, each row that has loops, every stitch is a loop. And then in between, I have you do um, a round of pearls. Okay, so if you want larger loops, you can use your thumb but I like the kind of smaller look, just like smaller fluffy looking loops because um, they're meant to look sort of like fur trimmed um, vintage mitts. Okay, so if I wanted to do that English style, I'm going to knit into that first origin stitch there. And same thing, bring my yarn in between the two needles to the front. And now I'm going to use my left finger as the loop maker. And I'm taking my yarn back through the middle of those two needles. And I'm going to knit a second stitch into that origin stitch and comes off the needle. And again, the loop isn't locked in yet. So you can see it kind of flopping around and sticking. So I'm going to pass that first stitch I did over the second stitch and lock in that loop. So you'll notice that, um, that this uses size three and size six needles. So that is because the loop stitch tends to be looser. So you can see here, they're sort of separated as, um, as you go. It's like a series of little knots all the way across and it makes that cuff fairly loose and open. And then above that you have the color work and that really tends to pull in. So, um, so size US three for the cuff and US six up here for the hand. And if that's not working for you, definitely adjust to um, whatever size that you need, honestly. So knitter's choice, truly. Okay, just checking. So um, <laughs> Sue, you're really funny. So you can really, you like, I don't know, I've never tried my pinky finger, <laughs> but I think you could use um, something else if you want small finger or finger loops or I don't know. I think you could use something else. Like um, I did actually try a dowel one time and it's a little bit fiddly, but yeah, so you can adjust. So I don't think, um, let's see. So bring it forward. I don't think it would work really well with my pinky. <laughs> but you can also, if you find that your loops are too big, um, 
So you can come over here and you can actually just like pull this a little bit and adjust the size of your loop. So here, see, I'm adjusting it smaller. So if you find that um, you wanted a smaller loop or now I'm going to pull it back out so it's longer again, um, you do have a little bit of leeway before you lock it in. So there you go. So it's really fun. I love doing the loops, honestly. I think they're kind of a blast. <laughs> OK, so moving on. I'm not going to do the Vickle braid in the round, but I do have um, a tiny, teeny tiny tutorial that's linked and you can um, you can see in there what it looks like, what the Vickle bra braid or lateral braid looks like in the round and um, also how to close it so that it looks like it's continuous all the way around. And that is it's linked um, linked in the pattern and also in the pattern description. So, and then Sue asks um, about how does how it affects gauge. So, definitely make sure when you're doing them that um, this is going to be big enough for your wrist, um, because. If yours tighten up more than mine do, then it could, you may need to go up a few sizes. Um, I don't know if I just do them particularly loosely. I don't think I do, but everybody's a little bit different. So, um, and I actually think that the cuff makes a great gauge swatch. So I, I don't suggest actually um, doing yourself any brain damage. So you, if it's not working out, um, you know, just rip it out. It's a good, it's a good size for a swatch. So yeah. And you probably have a better idea of um, how your gauge works out with color work too. So, so that is, um, yeah. So that may actually help you when you're, when you're doing this. Okay, so let's do the Vickle braid. Okay, so at the beginning, um, so first a warning, Vickle braid or lateral braid is really kind of fiddly and it's, it's particularly hard to do underneath a camera. So don't laugh too hard. Okay, so you're going to start it out by knitting a stitch and then slip it back to your left needle. So you need that extra stitch. Then you're gonna go around behind that stitch to the second stitch in. And this actually tends to be um, looser. So a braid will tend to, to be a little bit loose. So um, that's why you're going to be doing this on your smaller needles and you want to go around back and then you're going to knit that second stitch in through the back loop. And I think I'm actually going to use a second needle here to keep it from being all fiddly. So I'm just knitting that second stitch in and then the first stitch. And that gives the first braid stitch. And then that's gonna go back onto your needle. And again, you are going to knit that second stitch in through the back loop and then come in front and knit that first stitch. Okay, so if you dislike doing this as much as some as I do sometimes, like sometimes I just get like my fingers are not wanting to do this braid. So here is an alternative for you. So here's my last stitch that I would normally slip back on my left needle, but I'm instead 
here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to knit a stitch through the back loop. So here's the stitch right here that needs to carry on as the braid. And here's the stitch that needs to go behind it. So I'm basically going to cable without a cable needle. I'm going to insert my left needle into the braid stitch, pull my right needle out of that stitch that I just worked. And now I'm going to knit that stitch, the braid stitch. So again, it's knit one through the back loop, stick your left needle through the braid stitch, pull your right needle out, and then back into that stitch you just knit, and then knit the braid stitch. And sometimes this is like the only way I can do a braid. So, so if you're a, an English knitter, this is what it would look like. So I'm going to work that stitch through the back loop and then grab my braid stitch and just sort of switch those. And now I'm going to also knit my braid stitch. So you can see along here, I think I knitted an extra little braid stitch there. You can see along here, the braid is looking great and you can actually um, speed along. Like, I think that that's my biggest problem is that it's not so much that I despise the braid so much. It's just that I want to do it faster and it's, it doesn't lay very fast for me. So, um, so of course I had to come up with a shortcut that involves cabling without a cable needle because how fun is that? So you can see um, it creates a really nice braid across there. Just every bit as nice as if you did it the traditional way. So that was, that's traditional. So, and here's my little shortcut. Not really a shortcut, it's just <laughs> makes it easier. So see, makes it still pretty. So there you go. Yes, so Sue was saying, um, yes, it, it works so much better. Also, if your yarn is splitty. So Sue was saying, um, if your yarn is slick, if it's splitty or like if it's big yarn or um, any number of things like that, this makes it so, so much easier. Um, and if you're also, if you're a tight knitter, so sometimes I like really tense up when I'm doing a braid and this makes it so much easier to do it this way. So I hope you'll give that a try. Let me know what you think of it. Alrighty. So let's go on to another little technique in here. Um, after I show you these techniques, I'm just going to take a really quick uh, like look through the pattern and um, go over everything. But I do want to show you. So I'm going to show you a tubular bind off. And this is also, this is in the back of the pattern. So this is in a sewn tubular bind off in the round. So um, always remember if you want to do this, that you are going to need to do two setup rows. So these two setup rows are shown in the glossary. And I did one of them, but I wanted to kind of show you on here. Um, this is just a little swatch. So I did this first one where you slip the stitch purlwise with yarn in front and then knit one. So if you take a really close look up here, you can see where it's slipped purlwise. So in the next round, I got to the end here, my last um, stitch is a knit stitch. So in the next round, all the stitches that were slipped are going to be worked. So that means that at the very end here, like this, this last knit stitch here is worked and the first purl stitch is worked. 
So on the next round, both of those stitches are going to be slipped and that is completely okay. So I'm gonna do my um, second, my second round here. And then I'm going to show you um, the sewn bind off because I think it's actually, I think the pictures help, but I also think it's, it's really good to see it actually worked in, um, in the round. So usually when I'm knitting um, ribbing like this, I do an Eastern pearl so I can keep my ribbing nice and neat, but it needs to be a Western pearl for this. So I'm not going to work an Eastern pearl. So in other words, um, Western, my yarn is gonna come over the top and my stitch is going to be mounted with the right leg in front. So that's my Western pearl. So before on my previous round, I worked the stitch. So this time my yarn's gonna go to the back and I'm going to slip it. Then my yarn is gonna come front again here and I'm going to purl that stitch. So now to the back, slipped purl wise. So purl wise means that you're gonna slip it and the right leg is going to be in front. Now to the front again here and I'm going to work that stitch. So now if I were uh, an English knitter, I would have my yarn in the back and slip my stitch purl wise and then bring it front and work my purl and to the back, slip the knit stitch purl wise and to the front, work the purl. And I'm just gonna continue that all the way around. Ah. <laughs> so that's probably how a lot of people feel about continental. <laughs> like, ah. Okay, so I'm just gonna do this quick so I can get all the way around and show you this sewn bound bind off. So I like using two circular needles, um, but you can use magic loop or you can use um, double pointed needles. It does not matter, whichever is your preference. Okay, so this last one was slipped. I'm gonna put my yarn forward and purl that stitch and give it a little bit of an extra tug so I don't ladder. Okay. Just gonna get to the end here. So this takes a few times. Um, okay, so that's, and that last stitch is slipped. This can take some time to um, get used to, the sewn bind off can. So if at first it is not going your way, don't feel bad about it. I actually, I think it's really worth working on because I think it gives you just the most beautiful edge. Like it's just this beautiful curved over edge. Hard to see. Let's see if I can lighten this up a little bit. Um, wrong one. Let's see. Just so you can see the edge here. I think you can see um, how nice it curves around the edge. And then, okay, then I'm just going to take it back to normal how it was. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure my yarn here because um, I'm going to have to break the yarn to do this, to sew it. So I tend to err on the side of more yarn to sew with rather than less yarn to sew with. So um, I like to do, you know, around at least six times the width of this. So there's two three, four, 
five, six. So at least that, um, and I tend to give it a little, just a little bit more than that. And you're going to need a blunt tapestry needle because you don't want to split any of the strands of yarn. So this is the one I use here. It's just nice and blunt. And I'm going to thread that on. So this is not something to do at first when you're like watching a movie or having a glass of wine or something like that, because um, it can be, it you can lose your place and you will not enjoy it. <laughs> so just, just my, just my um, warning there. So I'm going to bring this, it's my first needle. I'm going to bring this up to the side and throughout this, you want to keep your yarn, this part of your yarn up above anything that you've sewn before. So um, just, just remember that like up above and then janice says um you don't mind playing yarn chicken <laughs> exactly until you lose and then everything is all over right so i've actually used this for a really large number of stitches like around the bottom of a sweater and in that case i didn't i used as much yarn as i felt i could really handle and then in the middle of the sweater i decided um i was just going to spit spit splice or like rush and join some more yarn so i could carry on so um for larger amounts of stitches that works really really well so in case you love this so much that you always want to use it again um you're covered Okay, so I'm going to hold this up here. So the first thing I'm going to do is insert my needle from the left to the right through these two stitches. So this is a knit stitch and a purl stitch. And remember, keep your yarn up above here. So you don't want you don't want to catch your yarn underneath here. Okay. And now this first purl stitch here, I'm going to stick it on my needle from the other side. So this is now going to become the last stitch. So I'm going to just slit this one over here. And so now you can see um, it's back here on the other side. Okay, and now this knit stitch can come off my needle. So if you take a look here, you can see that the right leg has that loop through it. So from now on, um, you want to make sure when these knit stitches come off of your needle, that that right leg has a loop kind of going to the previous stitches and then this is the leg that's going to be worked. So the next thing I'm going to do is insert my needle left to right through the purl stitch that is now on my needle. And I'm still going to make sure and pull up. So that's left to right. Now I'm going to insert my needle from right to left. So I'm grabbing this left leg of that knit stitch that just came off my needle. And then the right leg of the knit stitch on the other side of this purl stitch, but I am not grabbing the purl stitch again yet. So right to left through those two stitches. And then the last step with this pair of stitches is right to left through that purl stitch. And now both of those can come off the needle. And now I'm going to kind of tighten that up just a little bit, but not a lot. You don't want, you can actually get this too tight and then it's not going to stretch enough around the top. Okay, so now left to right through my next purl stitch. 
and the yarn is coming up above there and now I'm going to look over here so this is my last thigh knit stitch that just came off of the needle I'm going to grab the left leg of it and then the right leg of the other knit stitch on the other side of that purl stitch and you can see how it's starting to look like a little um, knit stitch is curled around there and then right to left through the purl stitch and those two come off my needle and every time it comes off my needle i'm just going to tighten it up a little bit but i do want to keep it stretchy so um, as i'm going along i'm just kind of testing to make sure okay so left to right right to left right to left off the needle okay so i'm just going to tighten this up a little bit make sure everything is going well looking good so far so left to right right to left and once you get going with this um it actually goes pretty fast it becomes sort of second nature and you will be able to see um, by looking at the edge here whether or not you mess something up so which i definitely do i get distracted i see a squirrel or something and then it's all over <laughs> so, so i'm just going to go along here so remember these are all worked in pairs Okay, so left to right. Oops. Right to left. And right to left. And now these two are going to come off of my needle and I'm going to um, turn the corner here. So just going to kind of tighten that up a little bit. And now um, I'm going to work my back needle. So Marianne, you had a question about gauge um, on blocking. So when you, um, this is this is a longer conversation. So let me finish this up and I will talk more about gauge because I can just get going on the gauge here. So I will just finish this up and so that I can show you at the end what it's going to look like, um, how to get it to look right together. So if anybody has any questions about this, let me know. Um, hopefully this is understandable. I do want to say again, uh, be really careful to like when you are pulling the yarn, make sure you pull it up and don't get it caught underneath any of this, uh, any of the other stitches at the bottom. So you can see like it's going up to the top and then um, every time that happens, because that will keep it from going over the top and looking like a stitch over the top. It will kind of look like a knot instead. We're just gonna keep going around here. And um, I actually used this, if you want to do a smaller, if you wanna do like a little hat that I um, used this on, I used it on the fairy snow cap. So if you're not into mitts and you want to do another project, that one is a good one to try this out on. It's a top-down hat and it ends with a sewn tubular bind off. So um, let's see. 
So Iris, you asked about the name of the brown child behind me, and that one is um, Red Rock Canyon. Okay, so, um, and then Mary, I do not have a tiny tutorial for this yet, but I will very soon. So um, I will, however, like do a couple of edits and I will um, I will find the time signature for this so I can stick it into the description and then you can come straight to it. So um, yeah, I have been kind of lax about that because I've been running around like a, trying to <laughs> just trying to um, find my bearings lately. <laughs> And let me see. So, um, so Sue said you can't really put in a preventative lifeline. I mean, that is true. Um, but I will tell you that after a while, you will you will start to see when you have messed up. You'll start to see the, the structure. So It really is, it really is worth it to do this. Like just a hundred percent so beautiful. Um, it's worth it to learn it, but it's knitter's choice also. So if you don't want to, that's totally cool. Okay, so here we are. Just remember every purl stitch, you're gonna work it twice, okay. So now we are at the end here. Here's the last purl stitch right here. So this is the last purl stitch. It was from the other side. So I'm going to go left to right. Oops. Across. Okay. So here is my last knit stitch that I, that I popped off the needle. So I'm going to grab that leg and then over on the other side here, you can see this knit stitch over here. I am gonna grab the right leg of that knit stitch to, to close this up. So you can see that is getting closed up and now I'm going to go right to left through that purl stitch up at the top and it's gonna come off of my needle. So right now it looks like there's that little loop there. So I'm going to come over to the wrong side here and stick my needle down in the first two stitches there and just pull this through to make that edge look better. So just to end that little edge there. And then I'm going to bring it back up and back down. So in order to, um, this is the wrong side. So in order to weave that in, I usually kind of just weave alongside my, um, my ribbing. So I'm just gonna weave it in and out a little bit on the side. And there you go. So you want to make sure that it stays stretchy. Totally worth using, I think. But of course, in the end, knitter's choice. So, and there are other um, there's there are other ways to bind off. So, for instance, um, let's see. There's the there's like a stretchy ribbing bind off and um, there are other ways to do it. So if you end up not wanting to do this, don't worry about it. It's, it's like, it's okay.
And also, if you decide later, like here, you hate it, you can actually pick this out. So um, it does pick out pretty easily, but you are going to have to pick it out. It's not, um, it's not a bind off where you can unravel. So this is basically what you're going to, what you're going to be doing. You're just going to be unraveling it. I'm sorry, picking it out. <laughs> I just said that, didn't I? Okay. Yes, it is totally tubular. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, I taught a class called totally tubular in New York. <laughs> it's like totally tubular. Okay. I am bad. All right. So I'm just going to grab this down here um, and go over the pattern just a little bit. Okay. So for the setup, um, you're going to use the contrast color, which is the loopy color here. And um, you are going to cast on an even number of stitches. The even number of stitches after the cuff is going to turn into an odd number of stitches. And that is just um, because it makes the cuff just a little bit smaller. So it grabs your wrist and keeps you warmer. Okay. And then, so they're small, medium, and large. Um, I like to use two circular needles, but you can use whatever method you want. So <clears throat> the way that this has worked is at first you're going to be um, going back and forth. And that is because it's so much easier to join to work in the round. And it's it just makes it so much easier not to twist the stitches. Okay. And then you're going to, once you join it, you're just going to purl a couple of rounds and then you are going to end up doing five rows of loops and then switch to the master color, which is the blue. And it's the blue where that you do the um, lateral braid in. So you're going to do the lateral braid and you can see there's a link um, right with it in this area here. So um, you can watch the little tutorial on it. And it does include this, this last part here where you close the braid so that the tutorial does include that part. Yes, Keanu, exactly. Okay, so after the braid, you're going to switch to the larger needles and then work one round and you're, you'll be increasing here. So, um, so you're going to start your chart A and chart A. So my, my charts, um, there isn't a written um, instruction for this because for color work, super difficult to do um, any type of written instruction that makes sense. I think it's really, really confusing. So I will just explain. You are going to build the thumb gusset. Um, right along the at the first part of the round. So what that does is it makes it, it able for these two um, mitts to be exactly the same, but they can look like they're mirrored when you wear them. So the thumb gusset, the thumb gusset is going to be right along, right along the seam. And here's that little stripe of the master color that goes up into the thumb gusset. So all of the stitches are formed with the master color along the side here. And actually, um, I, I also have a link. Um, I have a video for make one left and make one right. And I'll put the link to that in the pattern description. So make sure along here to be a little bit looser on the left side here because because this is at the area where the round um, changes this can tend to be just a little bit looser through here okay and this 
little area here. So um, it's going to be worth two, three, or four times. So this is the small, the medium, and the large. And then over here, the hound's tooth is going to this little um, four stitch repeat is going to be 10, 11, or 12, depending on um, which size you're making. So you're going to work up to the top. Um, this area up here is only for the large size. And so um, I'll show you later how this, um, how this is a little bit different for small and medium. So for both small and medium, you're going to end up across here with, I think it's 15 stitches, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, 15 stitches across the thumb here. So once you have that, you're going to place these on waste yarn so that you can um, use them later. And then this top part here, if you're working large, you're going to work another um, another four rounds and you're going to end up with 19 stitches at the top. So small and medium, 15, large, 19. Okay, so once you've done that, once that's on your waist yarn, just the thumb gusset stitches, you are going to come over here to chart B and that is just one stitch cast on. And then just you're going to just continue working this um, 10, 11, or 12 times to work this top part here. OK, so when you finish that, let's come back over here to the top. You're going to switch to your smaller needles. And you can see here, um, you're going to get rid of that extra stitch uh, because we want an even number for the ribbing. So there's two rounds, and then you're going to start with purl one, knit one through the back loop ribbing. So that's a half twisted rib. Then you're going to switch over to purl one through the back loop and knit one through the back loop. That's a fully twisted rib so that you can fold that top over and it still looks nice and tidy. So with that first part, there was kind of, that's a little bit looser. This gets a little bit tighter, which is not a bad thing because that makes, um, that makes it come in around your, your fingers up at the top here and um, you're cozier. So then I have a bind off here that that's own tubular bind off. And if you're going to use a different bind off, you need to work one additional row, I'm sorry, round of ribbing before you bind off. So for the thumb, you'll be, you'll be um, taking those 15, 15 and 19 stitches and putting them on the smaller needles and you want to pick up a stitch on either side of that one stitch that you cast on as well. So that's gonna kind of help close up those little um, gussets in there. And I'll, I think I will probably talk about this more next week also, um, just gussets in general and how to make them look pretty after the fact. Like if you end up with holes around your gusset, and um, you and there's any problem, I have a way that will fix it for you. Okay, so for the small and large, there's going to be a center double decrease on the on those three stitches for that you just picked up from the um, cast on stitch. So you're going to have 16 for the small and 20 stitches for the large. For the medium, you are going to just knit. So no center double decrease at the end. So that's going to give you 18 stitches. So you're going to have um, your small thumb is 16, medium thumb is 18, and large thumb is 20. And then um, same like half twisted rib. And you want to bind off just exactly the same way you did for the hand. 
Okie dokie. Yay. All righty. So, and also you need to get yourself a carpet bag. It's really important. This is your excuse. A carpet bag and a vintage coat. This is, I'm telling you, it's like, see, you really need the carpet bag. Okay. So while you're here, um, I had a couple of questions about my nut berries warmers and I just wanted to go over um, like the construction of them. And if you have any questions about my, um, my someone call a taxi mitts, let me know and I will get that. I will answer those questions for you. So here is, here's what the top looks like um of the nut berries warmers these are leg warmers that um i put out a while ago so here's what the top looks like so this top cuff here is knit um at a 90 degree angle to the body stitches and i am going to show you how to do that and also um before i do that there's there's also in the pattern, there's um, an instruction that you need to pick up stitches from the chain that goes around the top. So you can kind of see the chain right here. So you're just going to use that as a guide to pick up stitches to do this applied I cord that goes all the way around the top. So this is, is an basically a knitted on, it's like a knitted on lace bind off, but in this case, it's just using garter stitch. Terry, you need a carpet bag. You really need one. I hope that I'm gonna see if that woman who did my carpet bag is still doing carpet bags um, and I'll send you the link if she is. Okay, so up until now, you've been knitting up this way. Now you're going to turn it and go back and forth. So let me grab my, um, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to take my braid out and show you um, what that is going to look like. So braids do actually come out really easily, unlike the sewn tubular bind off, which is kind of annoying to have to pick out. So I always take extra time <laughs> to make sure that I get it right. But braids just pop right on out. Okay, so here we go at the end. All right. Let me just grab this last stitch here. Okay. So in the pattern, um, I'm not going to cast on the same number of stitches that it tells you to cast on in the pattern. So let's pretend this is my leg warmer here. And I'm now going to do that little cup up at the top. So the first thing I want to do is get some stitches cast on so I can turn it around. So I'm going to use my knitted cast on and I'm just gonna do five stitches. So there's one, oops, two, and you can use whichever cast on works best for you. I don't think this works as well English style, to be honest. I think it's a little bit more fiddly. Okay, so I have my five extra stitches now, and now I'm going to start binding off my body stitches. So I'm going to knit four stitches, and then down here, here's my fifth stitch that I cast on, and here's my first body stitch. I'm going to knit two together through the back loop. So I'm gonna turn this around. So that is the start of that bind off across the top. Now I'm going to turn this around and 
This first stitch here always gets slipped. So I'm going to slip that first stitch and then my yarn goes to the back and I'm going to do my stitches across here. So that's my first stitch bound off. And I'm just going to progress in the same way all the way across. And that is going to give me the cuff plus that little um, row of stitches right along the top there. So remember always to slip the stitch when you turn it over, slip with your yarn in front and then take it to the back and up to the end. So I do actually think I'm going to spend um, maybe a large portion of my next live on this pattern um, because I've gotten a lot of questions about about different things in here and I just want to go over it completely um, and thoroughly. So just to tide you over, here is what it's going to start looking like. So it's going to have um, that little chain across the bottom here and then up at the top you're going to have the garter stitch um, like just cuff up at the top. So once you have the garter stitch, that's when you're going to pick up stitches from each one of these little chain looking stitches across the bottom there and knit on that applied um, I cord tubing across the bottom. So another question I had was, how do you do this cord here? So this cord is it's just a regular twisted cord. So when you're doing this, it's very hard to show in great detail because it's a huge process. Like it's a, it's a, room sized process in real life. So let me, um, let me just show you. I'll, I'll take a little bit of yarn here and kind of show you how to do that little cord. Okay. So this is going to be like a, just a tiny, tiny little miniature cord here. Ooh, yes. Um, so Sue is saying you want to practice knitting backwards. I actually do that sometimes. <laughs> okay, so you're going to get your length of yarn and then tie, double it over, tie it in a knot. So usually I slip one side of this around a doorknob and the other I have around a pencil, but this time I'm just going to um, do both of them. I'm going to do a cable needle on one side and this pencil on the other side. So when you do this, I'm just going to switch over here. So when you do this, you're going to be twisting and twisting and twisting. This is a really short pencil. <laughs> I should have had a longer pencil. You're just going to keep twisting it and twisting it and twisting it and twisting it. So this would be like my doorknob. I'm pretending my hand is a doorknob. <laughs> just keep twisting and twisting and you'll start to see at some point if you release some of the um, tension on it, it will start to curl back in the middle. So you want to keep on doing that. You want it to twist really nicely. Like you want it super extra twisty. Okay. So once you have it, nice and extra twisty like this is 
this is looking pretty good. Like you can see in the middle how it's sort of wanting to twist back on itself. So let me um, transition back here. So you can see in the, how it's it wants to curl back on itself now. So now, if this were on the doorknob, I would go kind of find that middle point in the doorknob. And um, I'm pretty careful about making sure that it twists in the, like starts twisting in the right area. So you definitely want to do that. Okay, so now what you have is this little cord, it's twisted back on itself. And you're gonna need to make a knot in the end to keep it from untwisting on itself. So this is the end that was um, this that had the knots in it here. So that is your end that is um, is a little bit fragile. And then this end here where it folded over in the middle, this can be used to get it through the tubing. So I either use a big safety pin or you can use a bobby pin too, just to stick in the middle here and pull it all the way through the tubing to the end. So you can see um, that's what it looks like. And once it's through the tubing, that's when you're going to add any pom-poms or any tassels or anything that you put on the side. Okay, and then Mary Ann, I owe you. Um, so Janice, I'm not actually sure if they do. Um, they probably do, but I don't have one, so I don't know. Um, Janice asked if they made machines to do it. I mean, they like basically make machines to do almost anything. So I think there's a there's a good chance that yes. Um, I don't know, but I think it's kind of fun to make them. So I've never gone searching for one. <laughs> And then Marianne, you had that question before about the gauge. So I think you're probably talking about lace. And so Marianne's question was, if she were to get gauge before blocking, would that mean that she would not get gauge after blocking? And the answer is probably yes. So, um, so especially with lace, so with lace or with any type of yarn where any project where you knit something up and it's kind of at a looser gauge than the ball band says, um, you'll particularly have that problem because of kind of the negative space in there. So if you're getting gauge without blocking, chances are it will be too big after you block it. So I will go on to say, um, if you, uh, this is actually particularly also the case for garter stitch. So I don't know why it is, but everybody's garter stitch is crazy different, like uses hugely different amounts of yarn. And I have run across this in a couple of my shawls where I had the gauge swatch in garter stitch and some people um, blocked it and some people did not. So garter stitch is really squishy and dense when you first knit it. But then later on, after you block it, it really sort of loosens up. And so the difference in gauge was enough so that people were running out of yarn for their project. So my advice to you is for anything that you're going to knit, treat your gauge swatch like you're going to treat your finished object. So if it's lace, then stretch it out like crazy. So um, I always thuggishly block my lace and I thuggishly block my lace swatches. <laughs> so you want to be able to compare um, what it looks like to the final object. And when you look at a pattern and you see the gauge given, that gauge is taken from the final garment. So it's your always going to need to um, block it to get a really accurate gauge. So let me see if any other questions. Oh, 
yeah, I think Janice, you said um, you saw someone use a drill. Yeah, I've actually thought about that before, using a drill to twist everything up. And let me see. Yes, that would be kind of fun to do, just like a, a little experiment, like twist twist things. So, okay, I think I got everybody's questions. Okay. Um, so I am going to end this week's live. I will be back next week too. And um, I'm actually, because I was getting the questions on the nut berries warmers, I am actually just going to do like a, you know, just a whole full, like I'm going to dive fully into the pattern. <laughs> so, so hopefully you can join me. And the other thing I wanted to say is, um, so I have one more pattern for my um, 2023 Lace Lovers Club, which was the mashup. Things got like just insane. And um, it's basically been tested and everything, but just I was hoping that I would have my site like all fixed and everything and everything back to normal before releasing it. Um, but it kind of dragged things down. So that will be coming next week. So apologies for that being a little bit late. Apologies for like me not saying anything because I was just like, I don't even, I just don't know what to do without my newsletter. <laughs> so it will be out soon and um, hopefully you will love it. So let me see. Okay. I think I got everybody. So Janice, um, it it is super, super stretchy because of this lace, the lace panel here, but yes, it does. So, um, so in here, so there's a um, small, medium and large. And then um, here are the circumferences. Oops, I'm like showing you this, and I'm I'm have to let's transition over so you can see it. Ah, there we go. So I have small, medium, and large, and then the different circumferences. And then it's also super simple to add extra. So um, because it has just has this decorative lace panel down the front. And then if you want to, to add extra, you can just add some, uh, like an extra couple of um, columns of ribbing. So broken ribbing. So yeah, absolutely. It's really easy to, um, to edit. So, yep. And I will show you how to do perky bubbles too. So those are always fun. Okay, so I think I have everything. Um, okay, yes, Terry, you are so right. Technology is so great. And then you start depending on it. And then it's like, oh, oh, well, <laughs> I mean, what do you do, right? So thank you, everybody, so much for being here. Um, I really missed doing this last week. <laughs> So I will see you again next week. And until then, if you have any questions or anything um, and, you know, just write to me or you can come to my Ravelry or Facebook groups and um, I'm also on Instagram. And if you like this kind of stuff, please like and subscribe. And to those of you who um, are watching this later after the like the live chat and everything is done, if you subscribe, then you can come and um, be part of the live chat, which is really fun. So um, have a fantastic week and I will see you again next week. Bye bye, everybody. Take care.